This is it. This is Genesis. In the first book of Moses, the Genesis, the first five books of Moses, in the first verse of chapter one of the Genesis narrative of creation, this is where we find those famous words in the beginning. This is also where we find where scholars have did their best to remove, delete, interpolate, and to reconstruct and add paganism into the first verse of the first chapter of the first book of the Bible, Genesis. You see, the original black Jews, along with Moses, Moses was black, they did not say in the beginning. Original black Jews, they spoke every Hebrew. And when you look at those words, when you look at the every word and the every letters of the phrase in the beginning, you'll find something very interesting that has been covered up deliberately. The phrase in the beginning is from the Septuagint. You see, the, the Hebrews, the original black Jews, they spoke every, and that is the language that they wrote their text in. The Torah is written in every. The Septuagint is a translation of the every, and the Septuagint is Greek. That means that in Genesis chapter one, verse one, the phrase in the beginning, that is from the Septuagint, the Greek. The Greek starts off in Genesis with in archaic. In archaic. And in Greek, in archaic is in the beginning. But the original black Jews, they spoke Hebrew, every, which means they did not say in the beginning. Genesis is Bereshith. 
This is the Hebrew word for Genesis. But Bereshith, the T, should not be there. Bereshith is properly spelled B E R E S H I S. And the, the T, the Tav, the Tav, it doesn't belong on Bereshith, it is a standalone. The Tav is attached to the Aleph. And the Aleph and the Tav, both letters are standalone. They are not attached to the words that precede them, and they are not attached to the words that follow them. So the Aleph and the Atav, they are standalones, and which means the T, the Tav, it should not be attached to the every word, Bereshith. It's attached to the Aleph. And there's a reason, an important reason, for the transcribing of the Aleph and Tav in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. So the proper spelling of Bereshith Again, it's going to be the B E R E S H I S. And Bereshith has a root word, which is the every letter R, Resh, R E S H. And Bereshith in every is going to be, you just remove the vowels, it's going to be the B R S and H. That is the Hebrew word for Bereshit. But we're going to look at each letter, each every letter, so that we can get the proper meaning, develop the proper understanding of what the original black Jews were saying, what they were trying to convey to us. And once we look at that, we're going to see something very interesting that the Greek word NRK does not convey. NRK is in the Septuagint. It's a translation of the Hebrew. The original black Jews, they never said in the beginning. That phrase, that famous phrase, in the beginning, is from the Septuagint, the Greek, which says NRK. But as we look at the uh, Hebrew, Starting with the uh, letter B. B is the every letter bet. Spelled B E Y T. B E Y T is bet. Bet is a picture of a tent. And this tent lets us know that there's a family that resides in the tent. So with the tent, the tent represents the home a house where there's family in the family you're going to have the man the woman and the child that's bet rest the meaning of rest is high or head the first the top and the every letter s that is the picture of two front teeth. That's the every, every word shin. The every letter S is a shin. And that's a picture of two front teeth. Shin is where we get our word sin, S-I-N from. Sin. Sin comes from the every letter shin. Shin represents two front teeth, which means to divide, to press, cut in two, in half. That's Shen. And H, the letter, every letter H, is the every het. Now, het is spelled H H E T or with one H, H E T. But het represents a tent as well. But with this tent, het is, it emphasizes a wall, a dividing line, a wall. You see, in the, in the Hebrews with their tents, 
they always had a wall that divided the tenant half. And the front half was the men quarters and the other half was the women quarters. But the tent, it, it has a wall and it means to divide, cut in half, and the tent, another division with the tent, with the, every letter head, is that the tent itself was divided from all things outside of the tent. So the head represents a wall, division, and outside. So that's, that's the head. Now, when we put these letters together, when we put the B, the R, the S, and the H, when we put those letters together, this every word, very is it will convey something significant and something that we will not get in the Greek in our cake. Now, starting with the root word, the root letter, the every R, which is Resh. Resh is going to apply to the Most High, the head. And Bereshesh is letting us know that the head, the highest, which is God, he is head of Bet, B-E-Y-T. He is head of the house. In the house, there's the man, woman, and child. Bereshesh letting us know that God is the head of the man, he is the head of the woman, he is head of the offspring, the children. And that is that is the tent that is inside the, the people that dwells within the tent. So it is letting us know that God is the head of those who dwell in the household. And this is where the letter head comes into play because with the tent, the tent itself divides the family from the outside, from all things outside of the tent. And bet, by extensions, applies to all other living things in their dwelling place. So bet is not just limited to the dwelling place of the man and the woman, it applies also to all other living things that reside in their dwelling place. So bear assist, it lets us know and conveys the meaning of God is the head of all living things. He is the head of all living things that dwell on earth and in heaven. He is the head of the man, the woman, and the children, and outside of that nucleus family God is the head of all living things that dwell outside of the human family. That's better shish. That is the meaning of it. That is what the original black Jews, that is what they were conveying. That is what they meant. That is what Moses meant when he wrote the word better shish. He was not saying in the beginning, that is not what the Torah was conveying at all. It was conveying something more important and deeper. That the Most High, He is the head. He is the head of the man, of the woman, of the children. He is the head of all living things outside of the family. He is the head. And that is better shift. And we find this concept in Paul's letter when Paul he wrote that the father is the head of Christ Christ is the head of the man the man is the head of the woman that hierarchical head that hierarchical order of head of first that is Bereshit Joshua he alluded to Bereshit in his confrontation with the Pharisees when he was talking about the resurrection. And in the conversation, Joshua, he makes the statement that God is the God of the living. That's better shit. He is the God of the living. You see, better shit means 
the Most High is the God, the head of all living things inside the tent and outside the tent. That's Perishish. And again, it was alluded, alluded to by Yeshua when he was talking to the Pharisees. And we find that in Paul's writing in a hierarchical, or a hierarchical order. And that is the meaning, that is the connotation. That is what has been written as transcribed by the original black Jews. Better says, the most high, he and he alone is the head of all living things. The every word Yah, Y-A-H, Yah, that has been removed and it has been placed, replaced with the word El, E-L, and Elohim, spelled E-L-O-H-I-M, Elohim and El, Elohim is the plural of El, so Yah has been removed, and it has been replaced with El and Elohim, and the original black Jews, they never used the word El, they never said Elohim. El and Elohim applies to Baal. That does not apply to the Most High. The original black Jews, they said and they used the word Yah. Y-A-H. And Yah in Hebrew is going to be the every letters Y and H. You, you remove the vowel. Y and H, that is what the black Jews spoke and wrote and transcribed in the Torah. They never said El, they never said Elohim, they never used that word. They were aware of it and they knew that it refers and applies to Baal. And they never used that. But Yah, when we look at the every letters, of y'all, the Y and the H, we'll discover something more and important than the word L. You see, L, that gives the meaning of to be strong or strength, power. That's the meaning of L or Elohim. And again, the original black Jews they were not saying that. They did not use that word. Now the every, every letter Y, that is the every letter uh, Yod, spelled Y-A-D, Yod. And it means hand, work, make, worship. That's Yod. The every letter Het, we already looked at, and it Het, is spelled with two H's or one. And again, het gives the uh, meaning of a tent with a line drawn in the middle, divides the tent, and the tent itself divides all things that's outside of the tent. And so tent gives the meaning of wall, outside, divide, and half. When you put both of these letters together, you will get the meaning, we will get the meaning and the connotation of what the original black Jews were saying when they wrote Yah and, and what Yah mean itself. So Yah, it means worship, the make, hand, and work. That means to create. And Moses with the original black Jews, they were letting us know to worship the creator Worship the creator who made man, this is where the head coming in, who made man, woman, and child, that's the tent. Worship the creator who made man, woman, and child. With the ahead, people live in a tent, so that's living and dwelling. So you worship the creator who made man, woman, and child, and all things outside of the tent 
outside of the tent there are living beings in their dwelling places. So Yah, the Y and the H, that means worship the Most High, worship the Creator of all living things. Those that dwell in the tent, the man and the woman and the child, and those that dwell outside of the tent. And that's every other living being, every other living species on land and in water. That's Yah. That's the meaning of Yah. That is what Moses meant when he wrote Yah. Not El, not Elohim. El and Elohim does not give that meaning. El and Elohim is gives an impersonal meaning. An impersonal meaning of just strength to be strong and power. But the scriptures, the Torah, the original black Jews, they said Yah. They were given a more personal and important meaning, which is worship the creator of all living things in the household, in the tent, or in, and outside of the tent. Worship the creator of all living things. That is Yah. And again, that it goes right back to what Yahshua was saying when he was talking to the Pharisees. When he says in the Gospel, the Besorda of Mark, chapter 12, verse 27, where Yahshua says, He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. That is better shish, and that is Yah. The God of the living. Worship the God of the living, that's Yah, as well as better shish. And that's what the original black Jews transcribed, wrote, meant, and they were conveying to us. But all of that has been taken out, has been stolen, has been changed, has been replaced, deleted, altered, and we have been given the Greek word in RK that covers up all of this historical meaning that the original black Jews wrote in the Torah. Now that's the orig original meaning, the real meaning of British and Yah.